meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first thing we have to do is approve the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. We have a motion from John. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Stephanie. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Agenda approved. Next up, we have comments from the chair. Um, I don't have anything. Uh, not not a lot anyway. Uh, at the at the end of this meeting, we're going to talk about whether we're going to meet next time. So we'll save it since it's on the agenda um, at the end. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I guess I do want to throw out a reminder of some other things. Um, just let everyone know what I'm thinking about uh, with the city plan, like. Um, long-term plan for us to, to do work. Uh, I do want to try to make sure that we have time to do the arts and culture that we talked about. And I'd also like for us to do like a, a, a review at the end that's oriented toward social justice and equity. Um, maybe, maybe I'll bring what we have to the, um, to the social justice and equity advisory committee um, before we take it on, see what their feedback is first. But those are some things down the road that, um, and of course we're gonna have to do the land use plan and things like that. So uh, I think we're moving along nicely, but there are some of those other things that seem like kind of luxury things, but I would really like for us to try to try to get those. They're not gonna be mandatory, but I'd like for us to, to do that, um, which means we gotta keep on moving. That's all I've gotta say. Uh, so next is general business, and I don't believe there's anyone from the public to talk about anything not on the agenda. So we'll keep moving. There's no one in the room with you, is there, Mike? No. Just occur to me. Okay. Uh, so next we have to consider the minutes from July 12th. So we can take a look at those. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion from Stephanie. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Aaron. Anybody need more time? Okay. Those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Minutes approved. It brings us to the review and comment on compiled strategies for the transportation implementation plan. So in the uh, Google file that we share, there's uh, strategies. Is this working draft three? Is that what we're working on right now? Uh, I have to pull it up myself to find out. So in the transportation folder, there's I, it should be under the transportation goals. And then there's the strategies tab. All right, I'm looking at the implementation plan working draft three. So, um, so th that is, is that the best document to look at, Mike, to look under the, the goals? spreadsheet and then under strategies i am opening up to see and plan website station
Yeah, it looks like there was a working transportation and it should just say transportation goals and strategies. Yeah, yeah. So the one that says transportation goals and strategies, that's yep. that's what that's what I reviewed for the before the meeting today. So please direct me. The spreadsheet, not the word. Yeah, right. the spreadsheet, the Excel file. Okay, thanks. So we have yeah, but there's 20 strategies right now. Uh, so as a reminder, last week we went over aspirations and goals, the aspiration, the single aspiration, which we uh, consolidated is Montpelier's transportation system meets the needs of all users through safety, efficiency, attractiveness, quality, cost effectiveness, environmental responsibility, and sustainability. And uh, we had talked about six goals last week sounds like Mike's in favor of actually breaking it down to five. Uh, the goals are to increase public transit and shared mobility opportunities and access to an integrated multimodal transportation system, improve Montpelier's transportation system through the safe and efficient movement of people and goods, improve the appearance of Montpelier's transportation infrastructure and amenities for non-vehicular travelers, balance quality and cost effectiveness to improve accommodations and safety for pedestrians and bicycles on all streets and pathways, and improve the transportation infrastructure to mitigate stormwater emissions and heat island effects caused by roads and sidewalks. And then the one that, that and I, maybe I can hand it over to Mike now to talk about, he's, he's thinking of removing is the goal that said, improve accessibility to downtown and with neighborhoods for all modes of transportation. Um, yeah, and I think that was, I think that was covered in what I found was most of what was in there for strategies is really covered under the other ones that were above um, in some of these other, the other pieces. So there really weren't strategies that attached directly to that, that were unique to it. So it really kind of fit into those other ones and wasn't necessary in my view, but. And that personally seems fine to me because, yeah, once we look at the strategies, there's a lot of stuff in there that accomplishes this, but um, I don't know. What do others think about, I guess, the advantage of calling it out as a goal is that we're stressing it symbolically. Um, but if we remove it, there's and I think less we had talked readers keep track of. I think we had talked in the past about, you know, there's some things that are, that might be goals that appear in the text, in the chapter text. And really, I kind of thought this tied into, you know, some of the land use. I mean, it really is a land use piece. Um, and if you were to look at the strategies that were under that in the working plan, it actually was a lot of these, you know, this supports the land use plan for this and it supports the land use plan for that. So I think, or the housing plan. So it supported a lot of these other plans in the implementation of that. And so um, I think we can talk about it in the text as well, or we already did talk about it in the text as well. So we're not really losing it. Do we have any other thoughts about that? So does that, does that mean everyone agrees to just keep it at five goals and then move on to strategies right now? Yeah, I will take uh, silence for that affirmation. Okay, anybody else have anything? Okay, we will follow that recommendation, Mike. So for the strategies, did, did you want to share your screen so as you go through and make edits it'll come through or do you want me to share the screen just thinking about um, members of the sure. public who may view it yeah good point okay um, is it sharing yes okay So uh, the first one is to a policy to, you know what, I, I won't, yeah, I to try to save time. I'm not going to read all the words underneath. I, I did read it, but just so everyone knows, I, I did read these personally today. I made a couple of um, 
just like little little worth mything correction things like just be because like a word was out of place or something like that but and if anybody sees any more of those we can fix it now but we're just, i'm just going to look at it more macro right now and we'll just look at the, the headings so the first is a policy to support shared mobility on public property this would be a new strategy and the rankings are medium effectiveness and medium effort and it goes to goal one, which is to increase public transit and shared transport, transit, increase public transit and shared mobility. The second strategy is to, uh, is an initiative to subsidize public transit and shared mobility for low income residents. This would be new. Uh, this is something that's discussed a little bit in the chapter um, low, it's low effectiveness just because it's not reaching a lot of people, I take it? Well, usually it's priority. It, it says effectiveness, but what it was in our conversations before was kind of the priority. How do we prioritize these? Um, and I didn't change the header on it. I just had been going okay. through and filling them in. Um, I guess I'll just take a quick second to point out that um, just so everybody is aware, um, what I did for these was to um, try to group them together into things that made sense. And sometimes there's just one that just doesn't fit into a larger initiative. It just kind of sits there on its own. Um, I didn't pull things out that I, I necessarily uh, disagreed with. So there may be things in here. Don't think that because it's in here, it's something that I've, um, I'm advocating for. Um, you know, somebody may, may look at this and think, you know, is it really something we should be doing subsidizing shared mobility, um, you know, coming up with a way of, of getting money to in the hands of folks to subsidize uh, public transit. Um, this was the recommendation of the, the committee. Um, and so that was why it's on here. And there are a couple of them that are like that. And there's one I think I marked further down that I would remove um, that I think we can get to um, when we get down to the bottom. But just wanted to give everyone a little bit of, of a preface of, of what these are um, and, and how I tried, I tried to group like things together. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point. Uh, that these, these come mostly from the transportation committee. So something to keep in mind. Uh, okay. So we were looking at, uh, so the, the first one is, yeah, support shared mobility, which goes to parking spaces for like ride sharing, stuff like that. The second one is to um, subsidize some public trans transit and shared mobility for low income residents. So that would be some like new funding necessary. Uh, the third one is a program to um, annually fund GMT, which is something we already do. Uh, then uh, the fourth one, which is a pretty big one, is to complete the, the, or the Complete Streets Initiative and to continue that. Um, and uh, Mike, you did put, did you, did you write the comments underneath these though? Like, like when you're saying uh, one adjustment to consider includes a review of pickup and drop off locations. Yeah, so as I went through the um, all of those, what was, what was probably seven or eight pages of, of uh, individual strategies that had been broken out. Um, so there was obviously the, the big overarching one, which is we have a complete streets initiative, a complete streets plan that we currently have, and it's currently being implemented through the capital improvement program. So we take projects out of that and we identify East State Street needs a sidewalk. We put that money into the CIP and it gets built out. And that's how this is working. And over time, we will eventually finish our complete streets by doing this. But there were a couple of little pieces that came up in other, in other strategies that said, well, the city should, um, you know, add features to help residents navigate the many hills in town. Um, and that was a recommendation that they wanted to have more amenities like 
benches and rest areas on the hills to help pedestrians be able to navigate the, the, the city. So um, because that's not in the CIP right now, it's not in our complete streets plan, the thought was the best way to do this is to build that into you know, a revision of the complete streets plan at some point. We would probably revisit that plan. And when we do, we should add in these other things that were talked about um, as features that are lacking. Who would, who would be in charge of revisiting the plan? Would it be us, the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, or City Council? It would probably be a combination of the Planning Commission and the Transportation Committee. Probably um, when we did this, the, the complete streets is everything outside of the downtown, and the downtown master plan filled in the donut hole. So those are the two plans that complement each other. Um, and so when we did it in the past, we got funding, the Planning Commission technically got the funding, but most of the steering committee and the work that was done was done through the Transportation Committee. And probably a revision would be done in the same way. Although it, it always depends, the more the, the Planning Commission wants to be involved, the more they could be involved um, as members of the steering committee of that update. And. Uh what year was complete streets done? Oh, okay, it was, it was 2018. I think, it's, I think it was 18. Okay, a couple of these dates I have to go back and double check, but I think it was 18 for that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember personally being around when that was done the first time, but that's that's around when I joined. Yeah, I think um, it was done in 17 and adopted in 18, and that's also the same time period we were adopting the zoning regulations. 17 was all zoning regulations, and then January of 2018, we adopted the zoning. So Planning Commission was pretty much buried under zoning updates at that time. Okay, that's all, that's all helpful, because that's a big part of this, the work that's going to be done in this plan is going to be that number four. And then <clears throat> number five, the downtown streetscape master plan initiative. So this is something from 2019. Um, it's called a medium priority and a high effort on here. So this is just the, the plan that's specific to downtown. Um, and that's it's a continuing thing. We also we also have amend on here. As, um, what what are, what are you thinking of amending, Mike? Uh, so there, uh, in the middle of this, it kind of goes into there will be now need to be a revised plan to accommodate more on street parking opportunities um, and some other adjustments. Uh, the primary issue that came up with this is that the downtown master plan was contingent upon the construction of the parking garage. Um, so uh, the loss of the on-street parking um, in the negotiations with the, the business owners and people in the downtown, the negotiation was, I know you're going to lose on-street parking spaces, but that's okay because it's going to be accommodated in the parking garage. And so there was kind of a link made between those. And now that the parking garage has officially been killed, we are um, also now left with a streetscape plan that will need, it'll have to be amended or at least go through another public process to go through and say, you know, um, let's not change the plan and let's recognize that we won't have a parking garage and we're gonna reduce on street parking. And that's a, that becomes a question of policy for the public and for the city council and the planning commission and transportation committee to all you know, weigh in on. But I think we have to have another public process to um, readdress what to do about the on street parking question from the streetscape master plan. It, is is this the only part uh, in our strategies that uh, addresses parking? There's there's other things, right? There's a full parking initiative farther down. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I mean, people. That's definitely going to be something that comes up um, when city council is reviewing this. Um, okay. Does anybody have any anything to discuss on that? Uh, the sixth strategy is the capital improvement program, which is something that exists that will be continuing. Um, this is, it's a, it says here, it's a tool to forecast and budget for proper spending on maintenance and improvements on buildings and infrastructure. 
So the city reviews the CIP annually to develop work plans based on funding and project future costs. Uh, and so depending on how amb ambitious we get about completing all of the goals in this plan, the CIP might need more, more funding than previously. Uh, the next one is the North-South Path Initiative. So the East-West Shared Use Path was completed, and now a North-South Shared Use Path is uh, would be needed to complete the trail networks or the path networks in the city. Yeah, this, is been, a this is a priority of the transportation committee. It, it is a high priority. They do uh, really want us to be working or really they want to be working on this to kind of identify and lay out where is that path going to be and then to start to lay out, you know, uh, a, you know, a, a path forward to actually getting it constructed. I mean, we spent 20 years building the, you know, um, Winooski East, Winooski West, all the way out across the town. Now they want to have a north-south route so people who um, want to travel at least up to, um, say, the Nature Center. And then from the Nature Center, somebody would have to be traveling on street, but we could build wider sidewalks or, or wider, um, wider shoulders to accommodate um, bike riders. Um, but they at least want to be able to have kind of a dedicated shared use path, the same like you see in the downtown, but they want to have one running north-south, maybe along Elm Street. Um, there's a number of routes, but that, that's been a priority for them um, because they feel that's the best way to have kind of almost these bicycle highways that would help from a safety standpoint. Does complete streets have stuff about bike paths as well? Uh, it does, but it's really looking at uh, the the street network. So it might talk about adding in um, bike lanes into certain areas, but this would be a distinct, um, in some cases it may leave the road infrastructure altogether, which has been discussed. Maybe um, if we cross the, you know, if we cross the Winooski or across the North Branch at some point, maybe we could go up the other side, you know, Cumming Street and go along um, the North Branch Park and build a uh, kind of a shared use path along the existing path that's there. So there are some ideas like that that might be off off of the road network, um, but certainly it would be considered, you know, integrated into the complete streets plan if a north south route is developed. Was it was it the downtown uh, master the streetscape master plan the one that had some stuff in there about closing down some of the streets making them one way so that there would be room for a bike path was that this yeah they were looking at that for elm street because they wanted to, um they, their responsibility was only up to about langdon or school street i think um so they did try to um foresee that we would probably need a shared youth use path going on elm street so that may require widening a sidewalk to become a shared use path, uh, thereby losing on-street parking or losing a travel lane. So they kind of looked at a couple options. Um, and I think, I think you're right. I think they came down to making part of Elm Street one way would give enough room to have some on-street parking and a shared use path. But there was no envision as to what it would happen once it reached School Street because that would be a separate plan. But that would go into this north-south plan that would be developed. Um, and there's okay. no timeline for constructing it. It's just at this point, they want to see what's the plan, how, where is it going to be. Okay. <clears throat> I'm partly asking just because I want to make sure that we have like really, really good options like that are still on the table with, you know, with the plan that we're passing here. But it sounds like those things are all doable under this plan. Like if we do want to make some streets one way and be much more dedicated to non-vehicle travel. Um, so the next strategy is the integrated transportation study. So this is new for um, 
proposal to identify where transportation modes connect to ensure facilities and modes can fully accommodate other modes. And then it's, I think this is useful to give some examples for what this means. So bike racks near the bus stop, bike racks on buses, parking near the transit center. Um, this pro so this transfer, this would be a study done by the transportation committee. Yeah. yeah, I tried to go and see, you know, as I went through these to try to see where they could lump into other ones, I really just couldn't find a place above. It really wouldn't fit into the complete streets. So that's why it's its, its own study. Um, I just couldn't find a place where, where it fit into an, an above thing, mostly because it's looking at integrating across modes. And most of the things above tend to fall into a, a single or some other mode or something different. So that's why it's just a, a study. Um, they identified as a low priority. But. Okay. Uh, then we have the, the next one is the satellite parking initiative. And so this is high priority, high effort strategy uh, to look to, to look into doing satellite parking and to shuttle people in and out of downtown. Seems like uh, that should just be part of eight. It does, yeah, they do seem to be. Or on that point, I was wondering if that wasn't part of four, the Complete Streets Initiative, given that the garage is mentioned in both. Or, or maybe the Integrated Transfer Station Study is the new or I don't know, it's like the number four mentions that reimagining of the down, um, complete, wait, which one is it? The garage. Oh, sorry, number five, the downtown streetscape master plan. Like if this is a parking thing, wouldn't those be connected or no, not really? Well, the, the shuttle parking lots, the satellite parking lots would not be in the downtown. Right, I understand that. I understand that, but the the downtown development is contingent was contingent upon the garage, and if this is a replacement for the garage, so it, it's what it is at this point. And I think I think um, where I would go with this, I mean, it could certainly be merged up one with the integrated transportation study. Um, Really, I kept it separate because it's always been a controversial idea and it's never been a fully, it's, it's, a, it's an idea that, that people have always pushed, certain, certain groups have always pushed it. The question has always been, are we or aren't we going to do it? And if it ends up being one that we do, I think it's easier to start to roll it into some of these, um, these above issues. But I kind of kept it separate until we could kind of get an idea that, in fact, we're making a decision that this is the path we're going to go forward. Um, it's always been either a parking garage or the satellite parking. And most people said satellite parking is not going to work. Nobody's going to do it. Um, don't, don't we already have like several of them? That but are... I don't think we have transport in anymore since that capital shuttle doesn't run now. Right. There's also no problem finding parking anywhere so yeah true Not that makes sense close. to me as to why to keep it separate mike thank you yeah and it's going to take it's it, it really comes down to a, a two-piece thing so this was really looking at um especially looking out say route two route 302 finding a finding a piece of land they've talked about the the jacob davis house or where the, the 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 antenna is next to the John Deere, you know, there's a little field there. Maybe we get that and build a big parking lot so people can park out there and we can take and, and shuttle people in. But that's going to mean spending money to acquire land and to develop a parking lot and um, to then, you know, make sure that the microtransit of the transit works. Um, so it's I think it's a big conversation. Um, and, uh, and a big solution. We had also talked at one time about, um, you know, using a rail shuttle. If we got one next to the rail line, and that was what the 
if you remember all the way back to when they did the sustainable Montpelier downtown project, that was what they had envisioned. We're gonna build in the downtown and then we're gonna have a rail line that connects Barrie to Montpelier and we're gonna be able to develop that rail line and how we get cars out of our downtown is by having these remote parking lots next to these shuttle lines where we've got the trains that run all the time. But it, the, the rail idea has since you know, fallen off. I think it's mentioned in here somewhere. Yeah, uh, transit's moved people out. The commuter rail has also been considered, but VTrans so far has been one, unwilling to consider the option. So it really kind of takes it off the table. I think their their last study showed that the capital costs per rider were like well over three hundred thousand dollars, and then there are very large operating costs, and it would primarily accomplish getting people out of the buses that cover the same same area. But um, in terms of like the satellite parking and integrated transportation study, I, I would be maybe a proponent of merging those. It seems like I'm not sure the satellite parking is a foregone conclusion or a solution, particularly given um, you know, our new, new reality that is uncertain in terms of where, what people's um, commute to work patterns are going to look like, how many jobs we're gonna have in uh, our core at National Life. And it feels like what we're really trying to do is understand how different modes are integrated and how we make things work so that not everyone needs to, you know, use a use a single occupancy vehicle to go from point a to point b yeah i feel i don't know if we're allowed to do this at this point but i feel like that strategy is not useful <laughs> it might be useful as part of that integrated transportation study but i think we should i would i don't know i don't like that one um, yeah, that, well, it sounds like uh, sounds like that's the direction we're headed here. Is uh, maybe mention looking at different parking alternatives in number eight, satellite being one of them, maybe, and uh, keep the it's our it, so number eight. If you notice, is low priority, so it's also not a lot of emphasis on rushing that one. Well, we also have a 13, which is a parking initiative. So we may, if we want to, we can kind of mark this one, note this one. And then when we get to 13, we can always kind of decide whether or not we want to roll the satellite parking into the, the greater parking initiative. Why is I that? Way, I think we can just delete it and we can add the word satellite parking to number eight somewhere. Why was that satellite parking priority high? So these were prioritized by the transportation committee. Oh, got um, it. Okay, sorry. So yeah, that's, it's, it's high because they, it's an idea they really, they really like. Um, so sounds like we can remove, we're talking about removing 13 and number nine and then just making eight an integrated. Uh, well, I think 13 is different. Eight and nine, we can certainly merge together. Because parking is more than just the, the study of parking. Um, okay. So 13 is different in that it's actually, it's calling for action to create a parking plan for the downtown area. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's really the fact that, um, and we pointed this out, our, so our parking, um, parking is a enterprise fund. So it's its own thing. Um, and it is basically an $800,000 business. Um, 
we, we generate $800,000 in parking passes and in the parking meters. Um, so it's, it's a large thing that nobody's in charge of. There's nobody making policies. Uh, we kind of wing it as we go along. And it's one that we've said for a long time, we really kind of need an overall plan and strategy um, with better management of our parking, maybe that becomes a million dollar um, without much, um, you know, without going after people. It's just a matter of we may better manage it, we might make more money on it. So that's really what the parking initiative was trying to get at was um, how do we, you know, and we've been doing some new things. Obviously, we now have um, that you can use your cell phone to use the app to go and do that. Those are some new things that we've put in. Um, the credit card now that's new but there's a lot of things that we could do to maybe get better better management of our parking so that's really what the parking initiative is looking at don't those all go hand in hand with those those other items though and i guess you know it's a slippery slope to saying all these things are interconnected and and maybe that lumping in the parking um plan into that will will sort of overshadow what um, what number eight was trying to get at. But yeah, I think seems... eight, eight and nine both kind of work on the theme of being integrated. Par integrated. So it's, um, you know, eight's looking at, um, at how these things integrate, buses and bikes and these other things. The satellite parking is really integrated parking. It really an part of that integrated system. You're going to park and take public transit. And making sure that we have the you know the right thing, so I can certainly see eight and nine very easily merging together under the under the theme of integrated transportation system. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying about the difference between thirteen. Um, how to. I mean, since we're already talking about it, how do people feel though about about thirteen? Uh, everyone feel like it's a it's a worthwhile strategy to start acting on the um, on the in, on the issue of managing the the parking downtown. Given that the garage is no longer, that makes sense to me. Yeah, and for 13, I don't know about this, you know, managing to 85% occupancy. Maybe that's like a accepted standard. Maybe it isn't, but I'm not sure it needs to be like a policy that's included, um, in, included here. Like, I think it makes sense to adopt some policies, but it says here, you know, the city should adopt some policies and here's a policy, but I don't know enough about it to know whether or not. Um, that How about if we removed adopt and put consider? That would at least take out the. I think that's what we did on some of these other ones was we weren't we because we had that conversation of are we adopting our policies through our plan or are we adopting our policies after the plan is adopted and it's a separate action by the council and I think that's what we had agreed on was we were going to go for this separate action we really wouldn't be adopting we should probably just have that say consider I'd say develop The 85% occupancy, did that come from a preference, well, from the transportation committee or is that, or was that you? It's part of, um, so folks like Donald Shoup and the cost, high cost of free parking, that's that's the, the number and the target that municipalities work towards now and they find if you, so if you've got higher than 85% occupancy, you increase how much it costs. That shifts people from high use areas to lower use areas um, and it's a more of a economic way of moving people around and the idea is you would eventually have some areas that are either low or for free um, 
and then um, so you it might be less convenient, but it's going to be free and you're going to pay more for the convenience of parking downtown on street right in front of the store you want you're going to probably pay more per hour than you would parking on Stonecutter's Way, for example. Um, but right now, all of our meters all run at the same cost. So what we have proposed to city council is that we start to monitor these and start to adjust them. So maybe State Street would have a higher rate than Stonecutter's Way, for example. But that okay. comes down to. I think this makes sense the way it's written. With with the with the change to uh, from adopt to consider, that's what so it mean? should also adapt. I don't think that <laughs> doesn't it means the same thing to me. But uh, I'm not the. We can keep getting here. fuzzier with it. Okay. Well, it sounds like Mike was in favor of changing it from adopt to consider just. Like he said, because we're we're trying not to um, declare too many policies in this thing, because it, for one, it raises the question. We've discussed this before. It raises the question of like, if we're going to do that, why don't we just do the thing instead of plan to to do it? So okay, that sounds good. Uh, and so we're going to cut out the satellite parking initiative, but we're going to mention it in the integrated transportation. And I, I went ahead and wrote the word parking into that study. Um, I guess we don't have to actually include parking in that study. What do you think, Mike? Because it because as you were saying, inter, integrated transportation, satellite parking is just part of inter, integrated transportation anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll add it to the text. We we can. I'll I'll make it work. I'll just merge those two together. They're both mostly studies at this point. Okay, so that brings us to. Um, Toward zero deaths initiative. Uh, some, this is something new, national movement that's taken up locally to uh, better design and regulate vehicles to try to achieve zero deaths from traffic accidents. This is a uh, this is a goal that all the other things are trying to accomplish. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. Um, what I had as my issue was, we have a whole section on, uh, you can see this is getting to goal two. Um, goal two talks about safety. Um, and so, yeah, there was an awful lot that is in why we, why we build complete streets, why we do these other things. Um, but there were also a set of strategies that were specifically proposed. And so I kind of needed a header to put them under. Um, and if you think you've got a better way of doing it, um, by all means. Um, but it really came down to how we manage our speed limits. Um, and how they tie into um, the street typologies, the complete street plan. So uh, we shouldn't be adjusting our, um, our speed limits without first adjusting the streets. Uh, there's a proposal which um, I'm actually in favor of because, because the downtown master plan did not call for uh, bike lanes in the downtown. The transportation committee said, well, we're allowed to go down to 15, minute, 15 mile per hour speed limits we should do that because bike riders asking bike riders to ride 25 miles per hour um, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so if we're not going to have bike lanes in the downtown, we should take the downtown core speed limit down to 15 miles per hour in order to safely accommodate bikers. So that's one of the proposals. So you can see there are a number of these that kind of go in tied into that. Um, but yeah, I absolutely agree. There's obviously a lot of overlap with the structural pieces that were discussed above in the complete streets plan and the Downtown master downtown master plan, but this kind of covered some other topics. I'm okay with emphasizing it though. Um, make sure it doesn't get lost. To have its own strategy seems fine to me. I have one question, Mike. Do, through uh, complete streets or anything else, has there been talk about speed bumps in addition to the lower speed limits? No, generally not. There were some, there was some conversation in the downtown um, master plan report about speed tables, but not necessarily speed bumps because of the issues they create with plowing and, and with oh. stormwater runoff and other issues. But the speed tables 
uh, were discussed in front of, I think, especially in front of the senior center, uh, the Rialto Bridge, uh, mm -hmm. and another one in front of City Hall. They were all meant to have some speed tables put in. I, yeah, uh, I can tell you anecdotally that I'm on Vine and Elm over here, and there's a pedestrian sign that's often in the middle of the road. And like every single day, a car hits it uh, because people come down Elm so fast. So that's, I, that seems like there's more speeding there than on Main Street. Yeah, and some um, of and it comes down to the, a lot of biking. to the design. Yeah, some of it comes down to the design. Having some bump outs um, for the crosswalks helps to make people more visible. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot that goes into it, whether it's speed enforcement, um, uh, proper design of the streets, or um, you know, there's a number of ways of, of getting at that. But part of this is also to make sure we understand where the unsafe areas are and start to make adjustments. Yeah, I think I think Elm, as you leave town, especially if we're going to use that as a north south uh, pathway for bikes, needs definitely needs more safety measures. But I also know that I'm stepping out of my lane a little bit. But um, hopefully, like hopefully that stuff will all be considered and towards zero deaths. Does anybody else have anything on that? Are you are you okay with it, John? Yeah, uh, my preference would just be to rem remove it. I think it adds, there's a ton here. So I'm just looking at this a little bit on how do we, is there any, there, there's a lot of redundancy and a lot of things for us to do. And I don't think this necessarily adds anything. It does talk about the speed limits, which I guess I, I submit, I'm not a, a fan of speed limits. I think it's just an easy way for people for us to feel like we've done something when we haven't addressed address like the design speed. Um, and so I don't think it adds anything, but also at the same time, it's not, so I don't care that much. It's just saying, do all the things that we're doing. And then after you do those, lower the speed limit to 15 miles an hour. Which I, which I think cyclists will be breaking that speed limit, by the way. It's pretty slow. <laughs> um, Mike, do you think it's redundant with the other plans? I, um, I don't think so, not the way it's worded, but, um, and as I said, a lot of these were were specific strategies. There are about five or six specific strategies, all that kind of tied into these speed and speed limit um, questions. And so um, that was where I really just, I just tried to wrap them up into that um, and noted that we would want to have, you know, getting to John's point about, um, you know, having streets that are built to their speed. And that's, that's what the complete streets plan does. There's, it's a set of typologies. And the idea is that the typology is set for a specific speed limit. So, um, you know, the slower the speed limits, the narrower the lanes. Um, and, and there's a number of factors that all go into it. Um, and so what we want to make sure we do is that the design speed matches the speed limit. Um, and that if somebody does want to propose a change in speed limit, and we, we occasionally get those requests. We had a request two years ago up on Berlin, um, Berlin Street heading up the hill. Um, they wanted to lower the speed limit. Um, and part of it was, well, if you lower the speed limit, then we need to start making other adjustments to the road. Um, or if you want to increase the speed limit, you're going to have to make adjustments in order to be safe. Because right now, the the street, the design speed does not match the speed limit. So we wanted to, if you're going to change it, then you've got to make changes to both. So they, they're they aligned better. In terms of like, is there anything, if this wasn't here, is there anything that we would do different with this being here or not? And maybe that's the miles per hour. Maybe there's also this, this education program to teach users the rules of the road, which you know, I'm not sure is is a great use of our um, 
municipal resources. I'm sure plenty of people on, on Front Porch Forum will yell at each other around how to ride your bike or walk down the street. Um, I don't know if sending Mike around to tell people that's going to change anything, but um, again, that's uh, it was in the, the the strategies that were in the transportation committee, so it was lumped in with these because I kind of felt that was you know it was a completely separate strategy, but I felt that it probably fit best into um, into this one. Um, that's not to say that all of these are good ideas. Um, you know, I think the downtown speed limit of 15 miles an hour is good, but other people may not. Um, it's just an idea at this point. Um, and the educating people, um, that's great if it happens. Uh, I don't know if I would consider it a high priority of our public works department, but you know, if the complete streets committee wants to volunteer time to do it, um, more power to them, that's great. It seems to me that, yeah, design is much more effective in making drivers behave a certain way than, than the education plan could ever hope to be. Um, uh, okay, so, so one way to resolve this could be to include some of these details in our discussion of complete streets to make sure they're covered. Is that something that could work for you, Mike? Um, it's going to be, it's going to cross over both because like the, this, the policy to change the speed limit is really in the downtown master plan portion. Um, so, I mean, we can either keep it as a separate initiative or we can break the pieces out. Um, it would make these other initiatives longer. Um, if people don't have issues with that, I can certainly break those pieces out. Okay. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm ignorant about this, but it seems to me that like as far as like where I let my kids ride bikes, there's actually not many places in Montpelier that I would, but I would be more comfortable downtown because it does seem slower and safer. It seems like anything outside of downtown is really the what's dangerous, but I'm not an expert on this. But we could possibly in include something in both of those other strategies. What do other people think about that? Moving some of the pieces from the the bike safety strategy into those instead. Anybody have an opinion or thought or something to add? I mean, I like high highlighting the design elements as a strategy. I'm not sure if that's makes it more complicated, but Yeah, that would be my hope too, that if we moved it into those other things, and those, those are like design focused initiatives that that would happen. So merge 10 with four and five. Yes. Okay, I can do that. Did you have something about that, John? Did you have something to say about that? No, I mean, just that, again, it's maybe doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And I probably have taken up too much time talking about this. Maybe we should just move, move okay. on. Then. All right. No problem doing that. Uh, so uh, strategy number 11 is the maintenance programs initiative. So this is a high priority. Um, this is just, is, is this different than the CIT? Uh, it, it's, some of the pieces are in the CIP, some of them aren't. Um, mostly this is just where a lot of the transportation committee came up with the fact that a lot of safety issues are the fact that we aren't doing a good job in our maintenance programs. So. Um, you know, filling potholes, sweeping streets, making sure the, the crosswalks have their lines. These are all important for safety, whether it's safety of the bikers, safety of the pedestrians. Um, so uh, they outlined a number of them. I just lumped them all together into one thing called the maintenance programs. Um, so as it said right there in the list, potholes, trip hazards, plowing streets and sidewalks, 
street sweeping, line striping. These are all annual things that we do. They've got their own line items in the budget, um, but they're also critical and they also felt that um, in some cases these needed to be done better um, in order to increase safety for the users. Okay. Uh, strategy number 12 is uh, the unified development regulations. Zoning regulations are uh, well-known for other things. Um, traffic is a key consideration in conditional re use review and for new subdivisions. Um, so we might remove off-street parking requirements for neighborhoods within walking distance of downtown, require bike parking facilities, major site plans. Um, anybody have anything on that? Just one thought back to that, since we're resurfacing that parking requirement. Um, earlier there was in the parking Oh, sorry. Uh, in the parking strategy, there was something about discouraging private parking in downtown areas. And I would want to make sure we talked about how that those two things can coexist. Because if you don't give people parking, there will be parking, private parking in downtown. Um, so I just want to flag that as something for future um, harmonizing. Well, uh, well, I think this the number 13 that's coming up that we talked about a bit is supposed to, I think is supposed to be um, part of that, right? Yeah, it My says part. number 13, it says you consider the policy of discouraging private parking in the downtown. But if we remove people's parking, there will be more of that. Like those two things need to be, We, I would just want to make sure that we figure that out before we make decisions and maybe that's later down the road, but. To me, those two things could potentially be problematic. If we remove people's parking, there'll be more of what? If you take, if people live near downtown, I'm just thinking about Court Street, which is where I live now. There's lots of folks that live on Court Street that don't have parking and they park on Court Street all the time, which is a key area for people to park close to downtown. So if you take, if you gave people off street parking, that would free up Court Street for more downtown parking. Then I think that's the case in a lot of the nearby neighborhoods. So I just wanna make sure that we're not saying we're gonna both take away parking requirements at residences and then also discourage private parking downtown and get ourselves into a situation where uh, we're really blocking out those people. So uh, this is one clarification I, uh, for Mike. Um, I, when, I, when I read the discouraging private parking downtown, I, I interpreted that to mean to potentially increase the cost at the meters. Is there something else to that? Well, it was initially part of a larger idea of um, Trying to make sure that we uh, encourage public parking. It's the it's the reason. Although a lot of people misinterpret my support for the parking garage and why I think a parking garage is important. It's public parking, and it lets you park once and shop many. Um, it doesn't. Um, the more everybody has individual parking lots, when you don't have enough public parking people in the private world will start doing is, you know, they'll buy up the property next door, bulldoze it and turn it into a parking lot because they want parking or they need parking. And we don't want to get more private parking. Um, you know, I kind of look at, um, if you needed to go to the grocery store, drop off your dry cleaners, pick up um, some burgers and go to Guy's Farm and Yard, you would literally be within walking distance of Shaw's, Denoy's dry cleaners, buddies, burgers, and guys, but you would literally have to get in your car and guys, and then pull out, pull over, pull into buddies, get out, pull out, pull over, go to Denoyas, get out, drive down the road to Shaw's. You'd have to literally drive four times because each one you're not allowed to park and leave the property. 
Um, and that's the problem. That's what happens when you have these private parking lots is it just exponentially expands and blows out your downtown. You lose all your density. Um, if you're gonna have downtown parking, you wanna have public parking. So you have an opportunity to park once and shop many. We don't really want to have private parking lots in the downtown. I recognize there's always going to be some, but we definitely don't want to get into a system where it's all private parking lots because it's going to it's it'll destroy the core over time. Um, people will start. Now, when I was in Barry City, we had a number of cases where property owners would simply buy the building next door, bulldoze it, and turn it into a parking lot, and it was really starting to hurt the downtown. And that's, what hap that's what happened on Court Street. Yeah, that's what happened on Court Street. Yeah. Okay. So we're replacing housing and tax revenue with private parking. And her recommendation here is to require private parking lots. No, no. It, wait, what? It's to discourage private parking lots. But this is a parking requirement, which is a requirement for a private. Parking. Yeah, at a residential. Well, we, I don't, we don't need to rehash this entire discussion because we've really been through it, but the, there are parking lots that are made for residential buildings around town. There's one out on uh, Berry Street. There's one on Elm and school um, or court. There's at least a couple where people are diverting high density housing because there's no parking for those places. And those are downtown areas. So I think Mike's example is a good one. I don't want, I don't, I mean, I want the same thing here. I just think that those two things are leaving a particularly vulnerable subset of people at a disadvantage. And I, I tried in that last sentence of number 12 to really just put it in there as um, without, without setting the policy in it. Um, you know, it there, and this is absolutely true. There has been a consideration to remove off street parking requirements for neighborhoods within walking distance of downtown. Yeah, I thought that was, I think that's written just great. Just keep and it as a consideration and we'll review it when we get to whatever planning we do to, to figure out where is that line? Because currently there's no downtown, there's no parking requirement in UC one, two, three, right. or residential 1500. And the question is whether that grows to other neighborhoods or not. Right, right. Yeah, I think it's fine the way it's written. I just wanted, my main point was just to flag it as something that seemed like it could be problematic to me in the future when we're trying to harmonize all of this stuff. And I just wanted to point it out. So in my mind, the uh, we have stuff in here where we, we're going to look at and act on finding more public parking solutions. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's what I think is going to happen. It's like, we're going to continue to pursue like public parking opportunities. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, it's discussed briefly and, and I didn't put a lot into it. Um, but just put it into the parking initiative that the city needs a comprehensive parking plan for downtown area, especially with the parking garage being canceled. Um, you know, I didn't get into a lot of details to what that would be, but I just figure we've got, we're gonna have to revisit it and whether it's, you know, a decision that the community says, don't do anything. We just need a decision so we can move forward with um, making everything else. Um, kind of yeah. work in the work in the same direction. We could re we could revive the parking garage idea, st um, steal. We you know there's there's stuff we could do, and I'm expect I'm, I expect that we're going to have to do that. Um, do something, but the I, it, it's in the plan to do that. One thing I don't want to get lost is uh, John made the point that by disc in in number thirteen here by um, discouraging private parking in downtown, we are forcing that need over to private land near the downtown. So it's it's in some ways defeating some of our goals. I don't know if, it, if, if, if everyone 
caught that. But is that a, was that a fair summary of one point you made, John? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I followed. Like I, I, I thought I, I thought I heard you suggest that um, in number thirteen, how it says discourage private parking in downtown. That that's going to like push the need onto. Uh, on on it, to to move private to create private parking elsewhere, which is like in in what we and we kind of don't want to create private parking. Well, discouraging pri discouraging doesn't mean anything. Like it's, <laughs> it doesn't. It's not going to change anything. People are going to unless it's like a specific thing that we're going to do or not do. Um, Okay, maybe, maybe I was reading into it a, a bit there, but that, that is something on my mind that like, what can we do to not have places near downtown have that, any of that valuable land turn into parking lots? Yeah, yeah, like private parking is just very inefficient. It's an inefficient use of land. Okay, so uh, we can move on. Is everybody good moving on? Okay, uh, number 14, streetscape improvement initiative. So this is in addition to the downtown streetscape master plan initiative. Uh, it would be this new initiative uh, relating to signage and um, the policy to maximize street trees and green space. So streetscape stuff. So there were a bunch of random pieces and I thought about rolling these all into the downtown streetscape plan. Um, I didn't know if I was going to make that too big and, and clunky and cumbersome. So I kind of left that one out, but it's up to you guys if you want me to roll 14 into five, I guess. Um, like I said, it's getting pretty big. But... Anybody? mind that there's this other supplement type initiative. Um, I'm going to move on. Uh, bike parking initiative. So this is um, to, there's a proposed policy uh, to have bike parking every 50 yards in the downtown core. Uh, this is an, and this is another way. This seems like it could be part of the uh, um. it's, it's also one I put in. I mean, again, this is something that came out of the Transportation Committee. It was one that I, I feel we could remove. Um, I found it strange that we talk about being able to walk up to a quarter mile. Um, and having that be a walkable distance, but people on, but bike riders have to be within 50 yards. Um, and so it was kind of like, well, I, I don't think it, I don't think we need to go through a planning effort to identify how every 50 yards we've got another set of bike racks and kind of have such a, a very specific plan for this. As I said, it was in the, the transportation committee. This is one I think that we could lose and it would still be captured in when, when the downtown streetscape plan is built, um, these these types of features would get captured in that plan. Um, Seems like it falls I mean, under the integrated transportation. Yeah, bike and walk. Um, could we could we could we just include bike? parking generally an integrated transportation study? What do people think of that? I think that makes sense. We should connect this one to the art chapter, like Barry, they have cute bike racks. Actually, uh, yeah, write that down. When we get to the arts and culture, we can we can have a strategy to 
make some of these things artsy. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on. Do we wanna, do, do you want me when I move that over to keep that the 50 yard request in there or what's your? I, I, I maybe a general like to, you know, to consider how much parking's consider, needed. Consider the placement and location of those types of facilities. Yes, everybody okay with that? Okay, the next one is a TIF. Uh, so to con continue the TIF, TIF is a state program that allows new tax revenue to be used for public improvements. Vermont, or Vermont, Montpelier has a TIF district, as I'm sure everyone knows. Uh, next one is the designated downtown program, another state program that we're already part of. Uh, the next one is the capital equipment program. So this is different than the capital improvement plan. The capital equipment plan is a budget for vehicles and other capital equipment. Uh, the next one is the street engineering and design initiative. This is new medium priority, low effort. DPW has a number of programs and policies around engineering and design that ensure quality. I don't think it's about COTS. Uh, cost effectiveness. Yeah, it just captures a number of the things that uh, they are kind of already doing, some of which they're just you know, they're, they're getting to. Um, the PQI is something relatively new, um, maybe three years ago. Um, so it just balances quality with um, cost effectiveness. So you manage to a certain pavement quality um, and that's how you decide when to pave. If you want a higher quality street, you gotta pave more often, it's gonna cost you more money. On a lower quality street, you pay less often, and the PQI is really your target. Um, they, your road is goes from a zero to one hundred. Um, so, and then the, the program, the computer programs tell you which which roads to map next based on the amount of traffic and the amount of, um, and then you can adjust the engineering. Um, you know, if you're putting down, you know, four inches of asphalt, that's going to last longer than putting down two. So it's just the same idea as you've got a set of policies and a set of programs that you implement in order to balance efficiency and quality. Um, and that was one of the goals, um, goal four or five that's in there that talks about the quality um, and cost effectiveness of the system. So this mostly captures DPW stuff. Okay. Um, sounds good to me. It goes to that goal. Uh, number 20 is the Go Vermont Outreach Program. Go Vermont is a ride share and trip planning program to help residents and visitors save money. Um, is, is oh is who wants to who wants to do this outreach? Is it transportation or MEAC or what? Yeah, it's the transportation committee that wanted um, felt the city should be doing this. Uh, it's one that. Uh, I've, I've suggested in my note on the column with that I would, I would remove this. I really don't think this is a job of the, the local government, but this is one where um, the committee felt that the way to fix the parking problem is to encourage businesses to have their employees carpool. And so my response was, well, you know, that's something they do. That's something businesses do. Um, what is it? What is the task for the city to do? And so that was what they came up with was that we should advocate and be advertising and, and trying to push the Go, Go Vermont um, ride share program. Isn't it already a thing though? It is a thing, but they want us to do our own, um, you know, have, have staff or volunteers go door to door business to business to try to drum up people to use it and encourage um, 
it's uh, using the, the ride share program. Um, it's there, what we would be as an outreach. What do people think about leaving the strategy or, or dropping it? I mean, I'd understand if it was like this, the city employees should participate in the program, but I don't understand why we would also be doing the same outreach that others are doing. Maybe I'm not understanding this. No, I think you are understanding it. I, and you, know, as I said, I don't think it's it's the, our job to be also doing advertising and outreach for a program that the state is running. I think that's their they should be doing the advertising for it. But um, um, initially, they wanted us to create our own. Um, and eventually they settled on the fact that the state already had a system, so we should just do marketing for the state to um, our local businesses to use this program. Kind of, kind of demand management for parking instead of supply management um, was their approach. Uh, so who's in, who would like to drop this? Just a, I think uh, I think we've got a lot of stuff to do, and okay, someone's yeah. already doing this. That makes sense okay. to me too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone in favor of keeping it? Okay, so let's let's cut it, Mike. Uh, and with that, we are done reviewing the strategies. Um, so I know there are a lot of strategies and there are a lot of goals in there, but transportation is also pretty big. So um, yeah, hopefully 18, uh, we'll get it, we'll get it down to 17, maybe once I'm done merging them all. So Looks like I got to merge eight and nine, merge number 10 with four and five, strike number 20, and then add number 15 to the integrated transportation, which I think was either eight or nine. So are, I'll have a couple. Are people comfortable with voting on this now, or would you prefer to see after Mike's made the changes we've requested? No, I think the, we can vote. Okay, I'm good voting. Is everyone else okay with that? Okay, uh, so do we do we have a motion to approve the strategies as amended during our discussion? I will move to approve the strategies as amended during our discussion. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. Okay, so that was a motion from Marcella and a second from Ariane. Those in favor of approving the strategies of, of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So there you go, Mike, you got that uh, to work with. And uh, there's a few sections of the transportation chapter that we're gonna revisit. Um, it's a few paragraphs. Uh, I'll share screen again. Okay, so if I'm correct, the new stuff started with the summary of past efforts. That's what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, we still haven't populated the summary of past efforts completely, so I'll have a bunch of stuff to do there over time. But okay, it's mostly so, aspiration, aspirations, goals, and implementation. So, yeah, I, I just did a little rephrasing for the summary of past efforts lead in, but we still don't have all of the uh, the projects and things that information filled in there. Uh, that's something that that Mike and his staff will do. Uh, but we have this summary of the aspirations and goals. 
Uh, and so the heading is listing the aspiration. I don't need to read that, we know that. Uh, and so the text will say, there are many elements to an excellent transportation system. We want a system that is safe, efficient, and attractive while also cost-effective to maintain. It is essential that our system achieves those things while having a minimal impact on the environment so that it does not degrade other aspects of our quality of life. One thing I added here with the end, I added that last part at the end is like a, a reasoning for why environment is an emphasis uh, in the transportation chapter. Um, there's other reasons, but I thought that that was one that that's pretty broad and, and a big part of why we want to do that. Uh, and this next thing I added in, it's a little bit of being self-congratulatory about calling ourselves forward thinking, but I thought as a policy thing, it was important to, to emphasize that that's what we're trying to be. Uh, so that's why that's like that. Uh, I mean, if you guys hate it, we can change it, obviously. Uh, so as a forward thinking city, we think it is crucial that our transportation system allows people to live and work in Montpelier without owning a car. Accordingly, this plan seeks to make all modes of transportation equal. It attempts to meet the needs of all people, including pedestrians, bikers, users of public transit, and those who share transportation resources. Montpelier has moved toward these goals over the years, and we wish to see further improvement through accomplishing the goals set out in this chapter. Um, feel free to jump in anytime if anybody has anything. The plan breaks our, our aspiration into five separate goals. Each of the goals are currently in progress, but require additional investment to finish. One theme throughout these goals is to ensure pedestrians and bicycles are given equal footing with vehicles and that, this safe, and that the safety of these modes be a primary consideration. For most of the last 100 years, investment in infrastructure supported cars at the expense of other modes. Today, we recognize the need to emphasize the improvements in active mobility to achieve our vision of, community, of a community where car ownership is not a prerequisite for living here and that active mobility is a safe and efficient option. Anybody have anything? And so the, so the next section is the outline of the implementation approaches. Most transportation infrastructure is publicly owned and managed, which means improvements can be done through changes to city policies. The city can control how we use our roadways and how we prioritize spending. New and continued policies are found throughout the 20 strategies. We'll need to change that because there's not 20 of those. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove the word 20 and it will be accurate no matter what throughout the strategies and initiatives that are outlined in the implementation plan. This includes, for example, policies on how we should design our roadways, how we manage parking, and how we support new transportation options like shared mobility. Establishing policies and then building them into our plan is key to achieving the vision over time. We also have major programs to improve the system, the capital improvement program, and to maintain the system, maintenance programs initiative. Much of the work in the near term will be to convert plans such as the complete streets report and downtown streetscape master plan into actionable items and then include them in the CIP. New projects like the north south path will also eventually plug into the CIP when planning is complete. While most of our goals will be achieved through policies and improvement programs, there are a few regulations and bylaws that also address transportation. The zoning regulations regulate development to ensure it integrates with and does not negatively impact the transportation system. There are also a number of ordinances that promote safety, including speed limits and on-street parking rules. This plan proposes some additional studies to look at some special topics like the feasibility of using satellite parking lots. Maybe we want to cut that since we minimized that. Uh, a, re a review of how well we've integrated our transportation modes and a consideration of funding programs to subsidize low-income residents who use transit. What do folks think about the satellite parking? Should we remove that from the from the chapter? Was that Mike? You didn't think it needs to be removed? Is that what you're saying? I think it can stay. I, I think it's it's going to be in the integrated transportation plan as as a consideration, as something to study. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts? I will take silence as your, uh, I don't know, consent. <laughs> Maybe not the best wording. Uh, so anyway, um, 
where were we? Uh, overall, no, the plan proposes some additional studies to look at. Okay, yeah, we did th do that. Overall, most of our strategies are ongoing. The challenge is in how quickly we complete the build out of our plans. So far, the city has not adopted a target date for completing the existing programs, which would help determine how much money uh, would need to be devoted to the CIP. That would be a key decision to, uh, to be made during the lifetime of the city plan. So this is uh, this, this second draft version that, uh, that Mike put together for us. He, he accepted all of our changes from last week, so they're not showing up here, but it, this also includes everything that we have already worked on. Does anyone have any more or any, anything to talk about relating to the chapter? No, thanks for the edits, Mike. Thanks. Kirby did a great job. I just throw some things together and he goes at it. Uh, okay. So do we, should we, should we vote this out? Is that what you're thinking, Mike? Do you need us to? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fine. As I said, every, everybody's going to get, you know, we're just putting these things to bed for now. And once they get integrated into the the website and we'll all get another shot at looking at them. Um, so this is just to, to put it to bed for now so we can move on to the next thing. So do we have a motion to approve the chapter as amended? I'll move to approve the chapter as amended. Do we have a second? A second. Second, second from John. Mm -hmm. Motion by Arion. Those in favor of approving the chapter, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Chapter's approved. Um, which brings us to just a review on the aspiration and goals for the draft housing chapter. Um, So it should be the template. Yeah. I do want to. Before we look at this note that this is uh, from the housing working group discussion. Um, I, I had mentioned this before, I think, when we were working on transportation, because there was talk of leaving leaving it to transportation to cover access to downtown and improve neighborhood accessibility um and then new existing housing related to energy so with that in mind we can find this and, and i also think some of those can be captured when we do the land use plan the land use plan really is where we're going to have a lot of these you know kind of how does transportation and housing and energy kind of overlap and how do they fit together in our land use plan? I think some of these may fit better in there um, just as an idea for people to consider. Are you, are you keeping some notes about things that we're putting off for the land use plan? Yeah, I have a list. Of course, I'll, I'll hopefully have everything. Okay, so just for us to, we're, I don't, I don't, we're not going to do anything with housing, but this is just to get us thinking about it and get started on it. Uh, the aspirations as they are now uh, are first aspiration is Montpelier will have a healthy housing market that provides an adequate supply of housing in a mix of type, sizes, occupancies, and levels of affordability. Neighborhoods will be in close proximity to open space and rec recreational resources walkable and bikeable to downtown with a mix, with mix of uses within or having complimentary neighborhoods close by to allow for a live, work, learn, shop, play, and all a short walk. Housing and neighborhoods will be safe, healthy, energy efficient, resilient, designed for all users. Montpelier will have a housing for all and will affirmatively further fair housing in order to protect people from discrimination, promote e economic opportunities, and create a diverse, diverse inclusive community. Do 
Mike has some notes down here about moving things around. Um, can I move this thing out of my way? I can. Yay. Uh, this is the housing um, subcommittee's notes here. So, in, in some ways, I'm, I'm I apologize because I'm it's a little bit of stream of consciousness because I didn't review this stuff uh, as I sh as much as I should have. I wasn't sure if we were going to get to it. It looks. And, and I'm not trying to remember what we did. Uh, this is Ariane and me and Barb. Um, this aspiration, it looks like we've rewritten this aspiration A. Does this look familiar to you, Mike? If Montpelier will have sufficient housing for everyone who wants to live here? Uh, I mean, I've, I've reviewed what you guys had sent. I had already put together my note, so I didn't amend my notes with yours, but I figured we could have that conversation um, looks like you guys went with um, sufficient, basically, as the key word for the first one. Um, sufficient housing, enough housing for everyone who wants to live here. Uh, what did you have for B? Um, safe, resilient, and design for all. So I hate to be the person who has the same comment every time, um, but I, I do think this could really be one thing. I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about having an adequate supply of safe, affordable housing in Montpelier. Yeah, it looks like it looks like when when we had worked on it, and this was before uh, the planning before we before we got into the kind of the theme within the planning commission of cutting these down even to like to one aspiration we had cut it looks like we had cut it down to three from four um what what are yours mike are they like do you have like newer ones you were thinking of um so there were generally two so there is, is the idea, adequate supply of safe and affordable housing is, um, does capture a number of strategies that we do. I, I had suggested B would go away at all, um, all the way. So that's um, fine there. Um, safe and affordable, safe and healthy, energy efficient, resilient. Did we put our, because this doesn't look, um, I, I wasn't prepared either because I don't think we were going to get, I didn't see this on the email, <laughs> but I, this doesn't look familiar to me. Did we not put our updates in the spreadsheet? No, we didn't. We definitely didn't put them in the spreadsheet. I think that this, this Word document I have pulled up, though, is where we had put most of what we had talked about. Oh, okay, because that looks... I think this longer is longer to me than what we talked about, but I don't, I don't know. It was a while ago, so. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, this is the, because this, Barb is the one who was using this word collapsing. So this, this was, yeah. I think, first written by Barb. The thing um, about collapsing and housing doesn't, yeah. feels wrong. I know. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, this is what we had. I know we, we had, we also had some other documents we kicked around, but I think this was the last thing we looked at. I will echo Stephanie's comment where it seems like the aspiration is more homes for all types of households. We could, uh, unless someone else has a per, like a like some wording already in mind, interrupt me if you do. 
Mont Montpelier will have sufficient, safe, resilient. I'm, it's hard to fit design for all users in there. Um, housing for everyone who wants to live here. That is fair, diverse, and inclusive. Oh, I mean, that needs more polishing. I think it's a few too many commas, but we're getting there. <laughs> I think it's Montpelier will have a safe and adequate supply of a diverse supply of housing. That's not I it think, either, but assume, something along those lines. I think we can lines. assume di diverse in adequate supply. If we talk about adequate supply, we're not talking about one type of housing. I think it can be inferred that it's a diverse type of housing. We have I mean, a sufficient for, supply of diverse, for, uh, sorry, a sufficient supply of, now I forgot what the other word was. <laughs> uh, safe so safe and adequate housing. Yes, an uh, adequate supply of safe and affordable. There you go. Do we want to set a a minimum sort of goal for number of units? I think one of the um, one of the benefits of doing that is that you can avoid the um, the arguments. You know, whenever there's however many units proposed of um, of people saying, you know, you know. Uh, this is this is too many or the plan you know wanted more housing but we already built more housing and it didn't say um it didn't say you know we wanted this much housing so if we're like clear and saying like we want at least this much housing it, it sort of makes it clear that the community has said like we're we want more homes and we're, we're explicit about it i feel like just saying like we want an adequate supply is you know maybe technically accurate but if we were just to go out there and say hey we want a minimum of like a thousand homes in the next you know eight years or whatever we're being like pretty clear and direct and saying like we're gonna who you know we're gonna get some more homes in Montpelier and that's one of the goals of this would, um, are you saying that, that you think it's important to have that in the aspiration or would it be okay to call that out in a goal? I think it could be in a, in a goal, but um, I also think it maybe it's like an important one and potentially one we, that could be front and center for the plan. Um, so it feels like what we have here is maybe a little bit um, I don't want to say like safe, but a bit, a bit like, like mo everyone could sort of agree with this, but it doesn't also doesn't necessarily, it can mean very different things to different people. I, I agree with that. I think, yeah. Like Barb's been uncomfortable with, with doing, uh, I mean, I should be careful not speaking for her, but my perception is she's been uncomfortable with like doing like grand big things with housing, but she was comfortable with this. And I think that, I think that my interpretation was, is because it's ambiguous enough. Maybe taking some of that ambiguity out of it would, it would strengthen it a whole lot. So I'm with you. Yeah, I agree as well. I think we just couldn't get to consensus, but I, I agree with John that I would love to have a a number in there. Or at least in the aspiration part, we could, um, our current city council has their strategic plan goal is to have more housing. Um, and even so rather than Montpelier have adequate supply, Montpelier have more housing or um, it doesn't necessarily have to have the benchmark in there, but our goal is to increase the amount of housing um, and how we work in the safe and affordable aspects. And ultimately also population too. Like if we wanted to, if it's, if it's easier, if we'll have, you know, X many more households living in 
I don't think we want like to replace all of our homes Montpelier to become like an Airbnb community. Like we, we built a thousand more homes, but 2000 of 2000 of them are now rentals to uh, seasonal rentals or something. Not that it you know, would happen, but um, if we just like Montpelier will welcome this many more people in the next eight years as like members of our community or something like that. Um, so do we have, uh, so we, we only look like a few more minutes to talk about this, but do we, do we have like an aspiration, a consolidated aspiration idea? Have all of these different words and discussions coalesced into something, Mike? I see you writing, so I mean, I'm, <laughs> I've been trying to, maybe to, you're drawing a picture. I've been trying to jigger <laughs> things around to come up with all the pieces. Um, I do know there, there are two big um, kind of things that we look at, one of which is, you know, um, the amount of housing private developing, so our, our regulations and pieces. And then we have a second piece, which is kind of what we do through our programs for our affordable housing. Um, and that those, those elements of making sure that we have that inclusive housing um, and that housing, housing for all. I think like every committee kind of came up with a thing that was really key to them. And, you know, being able to live in Montpelier without a car was the transportation committees and um, kind of this housing for all idea was really where the housing committee was going. Um, and whether we capture it here, whether we eventually pull all of those little nuggets into our vision statement that we put together at the end, um, that was really what got them was, it's not just about making sure we have housing for the people that are here, it's really enough housing for anyone who wants to be here. Um, you know, we should have sufficient housing. Um, people want to live here. We've got low occupancy, you know, and if a lot of people want to live here, we should make sure we've got enough housing to accommodate those people because we have the services that, um, that can support more people. Um, our schools are asking for more people. Our fire department doesn't have to get bigger to accommodate them. Our police department wouldn't have to get bigger to accommodate them. Um, you know, we've got sewer and water to accommodate them. We just don't have somebody building more housing units. And so I think a lot of the housing committee is just interested in getting more housing, whether that's high end housing, affordable housing, we want, they wanted it all. Single family, multifamily, um, you know, we really, we have a mix and we want to just keep growing that diversity, um, you know, and I think that's, that's where they were looking for. Um, so how that all kind of squeezes in there. Um, Yeah, the idea of more housing, safe housing, affordable housing. Um, I mean, some of these terms, I got to say, are like they're ambiguous themselves. I mean, diverse housing. Are you talking about the people or the house? Like I'm. In this case, we were talking about the structures themselves. Um, you know, it hasn't been a big issue here, but it has been, you know, I know when I worked in Lamoille County, I think Hyde Park, 85% of the housing units are single family detached housing units. Um, so when you start talking about wanting to have a diversity of housing, you want to have a, um, you know, you want to have some multifamily housing. You want to have some single family homes. Um, you want to have some rental, some owner, some condo, some, you know, you just want to have a number of opportunities out there because, um, which you'll see when you get the housing chapter to read, it talks about, you know, everybody goes through life changes um, and your housing needs change as, as, you, as you go through life. And if you want to remain in Montpelier, we have to have a diversity of housing um, and housing choices so people can go from renting, renting an apartment to, you know, buying a condo or buying a house and maybe downsizing later to some senior housing opportunities. Um, we want people to be able to live and grow and stay in Montpelier and not have Montpelier be a place where you stop because you're in a certain age, certain people in a certain age group can stay here. Um, and that's what they're looking at, that housing for all idea. And I think the, um, there's an, an element of this of, of 
you know, lowering costs for everyone, housing costs for everyone by making better use of our existing resources. So, you know, efficient types, it gets maybe more to the land use issues, but um, that moves into the, the area or the justification really for a lot of like, this is why we don't have, you know, all of these density requirements and huge frontage requirements and setbacks you know that that it makes for really inefficient use of, of public resources and then other people end up paying the cost of that but when we do um build you know sort of like how we used to uh that is very efficient and then everyone you know housing costs go down by way of lowering our um property taxes Well, uh, for just a working aspiration, we have Montpelier will have sufficient housing for everyone who wants to live here that is safe, resilient, fair, diverse, and inclusive. Um, I left the design for all users part because I thought it was a little bit redundant with some of these other things like inclusive. Um, I don't know, what do people think about this one? We can, um, if, he, if people are okay with it, we can just like, this can be our working one. And then when we revisit housing properly, this is where we'll jump in and start talking about it. Does that sound okay to people? Or would you rather start from scratch than start from this monster? I mean, I don't to leave it in here as a placeholder, but I do feel like we're missing something with, I don't know, just thinking about diversity and fair housing. It's not, it's not really about the housing that's diverse. It's about, I don't know, advertising, marketing. You know, it's it's a little bit more complex to me, and I don't have the words right now, but I guess I'm just noting that. Um, I think that should be a separate, a separate goal in some, or aspiration in some way. I'd, I'd be okay with that. I don't think we need one aspiration for every single chapter. But. But maybe that's something we can talk about next time, because I think you're right. There's a lot of con conceptually, it's going to be hard to cram that in with other things. Does anybody else? I thought someone else had a thought before we move on from this. No. OK, so this is where we'll pick it up next time. At least people, at least we got a taste of it. So uh, we'll know where our discussion's kind of headed next time. Um, Unless anybody has anything more on, on housing to talk about, we can move on to the last item on the agenda. Anyone have anything? Okay. So uh, I'm not going to be here on August 9th. Are there other people who will not be here on August 9th? I won't be here. I won't be here. So anybody else will not be here on August 9th? Is it just I had originally time? stated I was going to be out, but I was off a week, so I will be here. I'm not organized enough to know. Okay, I haven't heard from Barb. She's missed our last couple of meetings. Like, I might check in with her. Um, Mike and I had asked her earlier if she had any thoughts about this topic, but. I hadn't heard back before the meeting. I didn't either. Um, well, if there's only two of us out, then then maybe um, I don't know. There'll, what be, people... there'll be three out. Oh, you, who's the third? Not, yeah, Ariane and Steph. Stephanie. I thought Ariane said that she was going to be here. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, well, what, what do you guys think? Do you want to, th those of you who could be there, do you want to have a meeting without us or not? Uh, 
um, let me do this between John, uh, Marcella, and our and uh, who's the Aaron. other person? Aaron. Um, let's just let's just cancel it. Okay, we have one vote to cancel. Mike, unless you're feeling like uh, we could move a few things forward for you next time. If we're not going to have a quorum, we might as well just, um, you know, if everybody says they're going to be here and we're going to have all four people, then then we can meet. Otherwise, you know, I'll take I'll, I'll take a week off. It'll give me some chance to get caught up on some things. Okay, that's fine. And that may support what we want to do with the natural resources chapter a little bit more homework and uh, so that I, I'd be fine with canceling that too. give everybody a little more time. It's not a yeah. comment on Aaron's skills at facilitating our meetings. I think he's done a great job in the past, but you know, the mere fact that you brought it up makes me think that you, you do question it, but <laughs> that's okay. It's okay because you wouldn't be wrong to question it. It kept my mouth shut. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you you drew attention to the issue. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. Uh, it's like uh, okay. So um, okay. Sounds like we're not. Sounds like maybe natural resources will get some work done. That sounds like yeah. Anybody who's going to be around and wants to use the time to to do some of the subcommittee work would that would be that would be super. But it sounds like we're not going to meet. Okay. Do we need to do we need to vote to not meet, Mike? Or I mean, it can just be by consensus. I mean, I'll be just. Are you are you saying that we need we do do we do we need an official act though, or can it just be that we don't show up? I don't think. I mean, if you guys just it's really as the chair, just, you can just go through well, and. Say, I just decided we're not going to meet. <laughs> yeah. okay. We're not going to meet. You're the you're the chair. You can just say we're not meeting on the ninth, and we'll see you all on the. Okay. The, onus, the onus is on noticing a meeting when we have it. There's no sort of obligation when we don't have it. I don't think. Okay. Well, as I'll you're put it, I'll put in the weekly report to the manager and some other things. So it'll get I out decree, there that it's canceled. I decree that there shall be no meeting. On August 9th. Um, okay. Well, with that, we can adjourn. Anybody have a motion for that? So moved. Motion for Marin. Do we have a second? Second. A uh, second for Marcella. Those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 <laughs> Good job. Uh, okay. Well, see you all in a month. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks. your time off. <laughs>